All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Devin Haney was out in the news, or actually Bill Haney was in the news in on Fight Hype, talking about how Vasily Lomachenko chose not to fight him. Also, there's a lot of conversation around Canelo Alvarez and who Canelo Alvarez is fighting. So, as a result, that brings my mind right back around to Jamal Charlo. So, I want to talk about Jamal Charlo and... Uh, Shakur Stevens, excuse me, and Devin Haney being the two, I believe it's safe to say t- the two most ducked fighters in all of boxing. But let's talk about that in this video. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. One of the funny things about the sport of boxing is that Sometimes people are too good to get the fights that they would like to get. So they're replete in the history of boxing are fighters that were just too good for their own good. And because they were good enough to cause problems to some of the more marquee fighters, they never got their shot. One, there's a specific period in time when it was true of Pretty much every black heavyweight wasn't allowed to fight Jack Dempsey, wasn't allowed to. I think it was Jack Dempsey who might have been ahead of that as well is um, pretty much everybody between Jack Johnson and uh, and Gene Tunney. I don't I don't know if Gene Tunney ever fought a black fighter, but he didn't as a as a champion. But Joe Lewis aft eventually became the champion. So he kind of made up for that, that whole era where their fighters, where they just believed were too good to give a shot at the guys that they really wanted to hold the belts. You also have guys like Guillermo Rigondeau, who clearly was too good, uh, to, uh, too good for his own good. Actually, he got blackballed because he beat Nonito Donaire. At least that's my opinion. He beat Nonito Donaire, who was supposed to be the next, you know, top pound for pound guy, you know, follow up to you know the the next the next Manny Pacquiao after Manny Pacquiao that didn't work out for Nonino Donaire because uh Guillermo Rigondeaux was Southpaw Cuban wound up beating him up uh also Luis Ortiz for a long part of his career was just too good for a lot of guys fight to fight still is uh being a Southpaw Cuban fighter Cuban counter puncher with knockout power a lot of guys don't want to fight him but Right now in boxing, if I have to say that there are two name two people that also fall into that category and is having the most difficult time uh, getting top, top level fighters. It is Shakur Stevenson and Jamal Charlo. Not excuse me. I said Shakur Stevenson. I meant to say Devin Haney and uh Jamal and Jamal Charlo. First, let's take Devin Haney because Devin Haney was actually speaking. It was Bill Haney that was talking about it. But just to give you some background on the situation with Devin Haney, Devin Haney is at a at a very young age, the former WBC 135 pound champion. How did he become that 135 pound champion? He became it by because Vasily Lomachenko won the vacant WBC belt. That was a vac- that was a belt that was vacated by Mikey Garcia when Mikey Garcia decided that he was not going to return to 135 after he went up and fought Errol Spence Jr. at 147. So now that uh Mikey Garcia is at 137, I mean 147, the 135 pound belt becomes vacant. Uh, Vasily Lomachenko fights Luke Campbell for that for that belt. Therefore, becoming I do believe in that fight is when he became uh, Lomachenko became the WBO, the WBA and the WBC champion. But what he did was he accepted, asked for, according to Mauricio Suleiman and uh, the WBC, asked for asked to be recognized as a franchise champion as a result he is no he gets elevated a franchise champion Devin Haney is given the WBC title and he fights a guy whose name I can't remember beats him so he's the WBC champion unfortunately for Devin Haney Devin Haney gets a shoulder injury I think even either leading into that fight or during the fight uh, it might actually be a chronic injury. I'm not sure. But regardless, he has shoulder surgery. 
And as soon as he has shoulder surgery, he is then stripped of the WBC belt by the WBC. He is moved to champion in recess. And now there's going to be a vacant title fight between Luke Campbell once again and Javier Fortuna whenever boxing comes back for that vacant WBC title. But note that it was Vasily Lomachenko decided to vacate that belt and accept the, the franchise championship not to fight Devin Haney. That is pretty much the same thing that Canelo Alvarez did with, with Jamal Charlo. But just saying one guy isn't fighting him is something, you know, that's just one guy, right? Just Lomachenko. But also, you have Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia's camp wants zero smoke with Devin Haney. Devin Haney was there for the win that he had against, um, I think it was Fonseca, that Francisco Fonseca, that Ryan Garcia knocked out. Devin Haney is right back, is right there in the um, in the ring saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's have this fight. And then what does Ryan Garcia's team start doing immediately thereafter? They start talking and sending notes and having back and forth on Twitter with Javante Tank Davis. So <laughs> clearly, uh, Ryan Garcia is pushing for the Javante Davis fight and not the, Devin, not the Devin Haney fight. You also have... Teofimo Lopez, uh, the name of Devin Haney ain't coming out of Teofimo Lopez's mouth either. Now, that's reasonable for Teofimo Lopez because Teofimo Lopez does a fight with Vasily Lomachenko. But if you knew, I, I do believe what you'll see when Devin Haney moves up to 140 pounds is you're going to see a lot of the same thing is that he goes to 140 pounds. All of a sudden, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys that aren't going to aren't going to be saying his name either. Uh, Jose Ramirez, I do not. be And now I'll get into that a little bit towards the end of the video. Why the guys in 140, I think, are going to do the same thing. Um, but, you know, it's yet to be proven that they will. But I have a sneaking suspicion that they will. So the other guy that you have in this situation is that I mentioned is Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo was a 154 pound champion. Uh, I don't believe, I can't remember which WBC championship he had. I mean, which 147 pound, 54 pound championship he had. But right now he's at 160 pounds and he is the, he's the WBC 160 pound champion. And how did he get it? The same way that, that Devin Haney got it, because the big money guy or the big most, you know, considered the top guy at that welterweight at that weight division decided that he was going to give up the belt instead of fighting Jamal Charlo. And that is Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo Alvarez's history with with um, Jamal Charlo was a little longer than Lomachenko's is with Devin Haney, but it amounts to the same thing. They were both at the Charlos and and Canelo Alvarez were both fighting on the same network at Showtime and they were both fighting and they were all at the same weight class at the same time, 154 pounds. And and uh, Canelo Alvarez found a way to fight everybody except the Charlos. Now, the Charlos, the same age is is is. Canelo Alvarez, Jamal Charlo, actually Jamel and Jamal Charlo, the same age. They're the same age, right? So they're the, basically the same age as Jamal Charlo. They came up the ranks the same time. Excuse me, came at the same time as Canelo Alvarez. It's an it should be a no brain, no brainer, no nonsense fight to make. But it wasn't to be made at 154 pounds. When he gets when Jamal Charlo gets to 106 gets to 160 pounds, then you still wind up seeing the same thing. Jamal Charlo becomes mandatory for the WBA, uh, for the WBC belt. Um, Canelo Alvarez decides they they actually invent the franchise championship for Jamal Charlo for for um for Canelo Alvarez. So Canelo Alvarez no longer magically has any mandatories and he's able to get away with not fighting um, Jamal Charlo. So Jamal, then Canelo Alvarez goes up to 160, goes to 168, then he goes to 175. And now apparently he's going back down to 160 or maybe he's at 168. Who knows what he's doing? Is he going to fight Billy Joe Saunders? Is he really, is he going to have the third fight with Gennady Golovkin at middleweight? What's he going to do? Well, what he's going to do is not fight Jamal Charlo. OK, what he's going to do is not fight Jamal Charlo because and this is why I believe that he's not going to fight him because Jamal Charlo has ability more than enough ability to upset the apple cart. 
Jamal Charlo has been training, knows how Canelo Alvarez fights, been looking to fight Canelo Alvarez. This is just a fight that should be a no-brainer, but it's not going to happen because Jamal, because Canelo Alvarez and his team uh, have decided that they have no interest whatsoever in fighting Jamal Charlo. Same thing. What it um so much so that Oscar De La Hoya comes out with these ridiculous. Oh, I gave him. A, I, I sent him an offer. I don't know who I sent an offer to, but hey, that offer is gone. You know, the offer that I sent to the guy who I can't remember. I don't know who he is. Can't remember who he is. But that offer that I send him is no good anymore. They missed their boat. That fight will never happen. Yeah, exactly. That fight will never happen because you don't want you don't want Canelo Alvarez to lose. Same reason Lomachenko didn't want to fight uh, Devin Haney. Now they might not. Uh, now I'm not saying that Lomachenko couldn't pull off a win against Devin Haney or that Canelo Alvarez couldn't pull off a win against Jamal Charlo. I'm just saying that both of those fights are close enough where the where it could conceivably go either way, and neither one of those guys, Lomachenko nor uh, Canelo Alvarez, want that. Also, in the same vein, you have uh, Teofimo Lopez, who I will see about Teofimo Lopez. Uh, but uh, I don't believe Gervonta Davis wants Devin Haney, even though I think uh, Gervonta Davis has the ability to beat Devin Haney. But then again, Devin Haney could pull that off, too. So all those there's just a whole lot of people that don't want to say Devin Haney's name. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders didn't want to say Charlo's name. Uh, neither did. Neither does Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez. The only guy that might be interested in fighting him is honestly, and this is a little bit of a shot at Jamal Charlo, is Demetrius Andre, because it seems like neither one of those guys want to fight each other. But anyway, that's my take on these two guys who I think are the most ducked fighters in boxing. I hope it changes soon. Uh, you let me know in the comment section what you think and if whether or not that's going to change. If my reasoning's off, just let me know in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.